The iPad Pro has came a long way in the game. From its software features like Stage Manager and even Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro on the iPad as well. And of course, hardware being top notch, stellar with its Pro XDR display and even its Thunderbolt connectivity. Can an iPad Pro finally replace a Mac in 2023? And I think the answer is kind of tricky. So typically on my Mac, I always surf the web first thing in the morning, see what's new with my emails, check the YouTube comments. Undeniably, you can do that on your iPad. You could definitely surf the web, but with a big asterisk. Certain websites might not be compatible on the iPad. Let's say you're logging into a portal or you're taking an online test or you work in corporate. Certain online portals might not function properly because it's on a tablet. Although you can access pretty much 80 to 90% of the sites on an iPad, if you've ever been an iPad owner, you understand. When you're trying to upload that attachment, sometimes it could be a little bit of a hiccup. Blackboard, if you're a college student, you could be able to log into that. I would say most of the time, the online experience is gonna be solid. Media consumption, social media. I'll even argue that you might get a better experience on the iPad just because of the form factor. You could be able to take this anywhere. Something about holding an iPad, watching movies, watching YouTube is always a pleasant experience. And pairing that up with the iPad Pro quad speakers, you might even get a better speaker on the iPad compared to the MacBook. I'm actually gonna do a sound comparison between my 16 inch MacBook Pro versus the iPad Pro 12.9 inch. The MacBook sounds a little bit better, but the iPad is no slouch. Even searching social media, you have Instagram, which to this day, I don't understand. There's no iPad app, but that's not Apple's fault. That's Facebook, that's Meta. But I would say a situation like this, this is where Stage Manager comes into play because you can actually multitask. So you have Instagram on one side of the screen and then you can have Twitter. And yes, you could do that perfectly on the MacBook, especially if not better because on the iPad, they kind of limit on how many windows you can have open at a time. It is pretty cool to see all these apps open at once, something that you just can't do on an iPhone. Um, please, Apple, give us split screen multitasking. It is time to get some work done. Now, when it comes down to creating content, can an iPad Pro do it? Now, it depends on what kind of content that you're making. In my field is video production, taking pictures, editing them. Yes, you have Final Cut Pro finally on an iPad. We've been waiting for all this time. I, I can't even tell you how long we've been waiting for Final Cut Pro on an iPad. And yes, Apple delivered, but it's a very, very, very learning curve. Apple designed Final Cut Pro with touch first. With Final Cut Pro on the Mac, it was designed for mouse and keyboard in mind. And looking at the interface right away, you could tell things are mixed up a little bit. And you even have some features that's just flat out missing, such as uh, to be able to paste the attributes. And yes, you can use a magic keyboard to get a better experience. But even with that, yes, the shortcuts work, but it's like you gotta move the playhead to where you wanna cut it. If you use Final Cut Pro for the past 12 years like me, you understand it's just a totally different ball game. Although you have some new features such as the live drawing, which is gonna be pretty cool for some vlogs, some day in the lives maybe in the future, but it's something that if I never use Final Cut Pro on the Mac and I just automatically go to the iPad, maybe I'll like it, but I've been so spoiled of using Final Cut Pro on the Mac that it's a downgrade going to the iPad. Now, the only way of me using this is if I, how can I even say it? If I'm going on the bus or if I'm going to the city, taking public transportation subway, and I filmed a vlog and I want to get started of editing the vlog, I can open up Final Cut Pro on my iPad, cut out some of the dead space. So when you come home, you can be able to export that Final Cut Pro project to your Mac. You can be able to color grade it, add your motion effects, add your plugins that I like to use, which it is absent on the iPad version of Final Cut Pro, but it is coming soon. And you have other editing software apps too, such as LumaFusion, which was always the go-to 
And even so, with LumaFusion, you can export it as an XML file and you can be able to pick up where you left off on your Mac. But the thing that irks me with Final Cut Pro, it's a subscription. It's $5 a month. Yes, it's not bad, but Final Cut Pro on the Mac is a one-time purchase of $300. Yes, it's expensive for an app, but for me, worth every single penny. It's one of the best investments ever. But for me, no. I'm going to say no. I'd rather stick to my Mac for Final Cut Pro and just call it a day. Folder editing is the complete opposite. I'd much rather edit a picture on an iPad opposed to the Mac. You have all of your presets there. You pair it up with Pixelmator with the Apple Pencil. You can be able to pinch and zoom and see what you want to mask out, what you want to crop out a little bit. With the Apple Pencil and the iPad, photo editing is a complete dream. I'd much rather edit photos on an iPad. And also, if you're an artist, Procreate is going to be your best friend. There's nothing beating the Apple Pencil and iPad Pro. And those of you guys that's going to school, you could jot down some notes using Notability. There's no denying that the Apple Pencil is the ultimate way to use your iPad. And pairing it up with the Magic Keyboard, you kind of get in like a similar laptop experience when you need it. So you could be able to use your trackpad and have a full-size keyboard if you have the 12.9 inch iPad, but the 11 inch is gonna be a little bit more cramped. Now any sort of word processing, the iPad is gonna handle it with flying colors, especially if you're going to school and you have both Word and you have Pages, which I primarily use here. And like I said, pairing it up with the Magic Keyboard, this is gonna give you the ultimate combo. And you have apps such as Grammarly to check any punctuation or even spelling errors. Yeah, no slouch typing up documents on an iPad at all. It's still iPad OS. If you're doing certain tasks, you might not get to point A to point B as efficiently, but it depends on the task and the mission. Sometimes the iPad works best. Now, connecting hard drives, no problem. You have Type-C pretty much across the lineup except for the iPad 9. You can connect a USB dongle, plug in a thumb drive, SSDs, and you can be able to access all your files on the Files app. And even so, I like to take pictures on my camera, my mirrorless camera, and edit the photos on the iPad and drop it right there on Instagram. Now, the only problem is when playing videos, I'm trying to view 10-bit 422 4K footage it can't open up on the iPad. It's something with the Kodak. Now all the heavy lifting stuff out the way, it's time to kick back, relax, play some games. And I would say for this point, I would recommend the iPad mini. The smallest screen is easy to use the controls and you could be able to pair up a PlayStation controller or even an Xbox controller and be just fine. But you have apps like Remote Play, Xbox Game Pass and be able to take your AAA experience out on your iPad or even on your phone too for that matter. And even so, I don't even game on my Mac at all. Whenever the work is done, that's when I turn on my PS5, but it's just a little bonus I wanted to add in there. Um, but yeah, um, for the most part, the iPad has came a long way, like I said in the very beginning, and you could do so much more now. You could do so much more now than ever before. There may be some loopholes along the way to keep in mind of, but it can be done on an iPad. This is the modern way of computing. And with Apple Vision Pro, I'm not trying to turn this into an Apple Vision Pro video. I'm curious to see how that's going to handle it. Can that be able to replace an iPad? The iPad already is expensive. Like why spend $1,100 or, or, or even more than that with the Apple Pencil and the Magic Keyboard when you can get like the Apple Vision Pro and have a, a big, a, a wide, an endless, an infinite amount of canvas that's going to be an interesting comparison. Needless to say, I think that's where I'm going to end off this video. Let me know down in the comments down below. Can an iPad replace your computer? Or if you don't have an iPad, do you think an iPad could be able to compete? Other than that, I hope you guys all have a simple day.